Hi there, it's uh, Monday, June the 7th, and we're at Easy Grove Farms in Ontario, Canada, and I'm with Dusty Zamanek, the owner of the farm. And uh, we're just going to have a little discussion about the state of the berry industry in Canada and the steps that they're taking here at Easy Grove Farm in order to be reactive to the upcoming demands and changes and opportunities in the berry industry. So, Dusty, thanks for taking uh, some time. Yeah, my bet. Thanks for being here, Richard. It's, uh, it's been really interesting here at Easy Grow being a long 30, 40 years in the strawberry nursery game. And the last six years we've been working with Cravo uh, from the inception of, the, uh, of our greenhouse nursery program. Um, the, the covered, protected culture of strawberry production is something that isn't, say, new to the world. But I think it's coming now in waves uh, that, uh, that brings a lot of excitement. Um, for the Ontario and the Canadian uh, consumer and for farmers and the technology like Cravo gives those opportunities and we're excited to now be signed on for our third, uh, our third phase uh, for strawberry plant propagation here with the Cravo in southern Ontario. Now you've also been producing strawberry plants for Florida, a place down south. Correct. That's, that's how you got started? That's right. That's it. And then when did you start to zero in on the actual greenhouse part of the industry? Yeah, our first phase, the, the three houses behind us, uh, was built in 2017. Um, and that was when the Leamington and the Nargan Lake area was messing around with the potential for the idea. And uh, what they were missing was a properly grown plant but earlier than our delivery window that would be normally for export. So that necessitated something like a, like a greenhouse uh, that could start the program earlier, but could also handle the heat of that, you know, temperatures we get in July and August, uh, while also having a greenhouse capable of producing plants earlier. And that's where we, we found Cravo. So when you think of the changes from back in 2000, 2017 to now, um, the original phase had a very simple retractable roof. Mm -hmm. And what are the fun of some of the changes or improvements that you've had to make here in order to be responsive to what your clients wanted? Yeah, well, one big thing obviously that we can see above us is the retractable heat curtain. Um, that heat retention curtain is, uh, is, we're actually using it for multiple purposes. Using it to start our plants, the mother plants earlier in the season, as our customers are wanting to hit earlier windows uh, and that provides us that opportunity to trap in heat in the early spring um, and uh, that, like that, that, that's a big one. Also the use of interior walls uh, so we can com compartmentalize and have zones within the greenhouse uh, really helps the efficiency of that program as well. Um, that, like, that's a, been a big one as well as supplementing heat into the program uh, and so Cravo you guys have been great for adding in the gaskets to go to the roof. Uh, to give us the heat capabilities as well. So when you look at the, the plant quality, um, what are some of the, um, how, how do you judge the quality in terms of what are you looking for and what are you achieving here? Absolutely. Um, the One of the big things that we're working for and looking for is, is obviously uniformity. Uh, that's a big one. And you know, working with, uh, you know, being here in Southern Ontario close to Brantford has been great because like even today, we we're talking about how can we optimize our situation because we vent differently and we can allow real raw environment into the leaf and into the plant. So at the beginning, we want to focus on the mother. And now we, we need to focus on the quality of plant because we're getting soon to uh, you know harvesting soon. So how can we get that uniformity? How can we get that correct leaf size? And uh, so going in, so it is a plant when it does get separated, that it's, uh, it's, it's race ready and as strong as possible. So one of the key things in our discussions today was at the start of the season back in March, you're really focusing on making the plant warmer yeah. to get it to grow faster. Uh, but now we have to shift our thinking into plant quality. Right. And so now that's making the decisions on whether the roof is retracted, when is it going to close, what are we going to look at? Because the, the first key is we're actually managing the plant, not the environment. Right. So the quality standards that you were looking for, small thick leaves, roots ready to pop. Yep. Yep. And so, because in two weeks when you cut these plants off the mothers, mm -hmm. now you're going to move into a very high risk situation yep. because a high transpiration rate will cause plant damage. Right. So the stronger we can make these leaves, the thicker they are, the smaller they are, the, uh, the better these plants are prepared to move into the tray plant. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, any general observations from insect or foliar disease point of view inside the retractable roof? Honestly, the, uh, the biggest thing is that letting, getting natural wind through here and being able to vent in such a different, unique way. Uh, we're, we're seeing clean plants with, obviously, with honestly a very minor program for pesticides, uh, which, which is the big thing. And uh, that, like, that's been so rewarding to see. And that when it comes in, we can control it. But for the most part, compared to our outside production, it's uh, they are almost a tale of two tales of two worlds. Well, sure. So in terms of, you're, you're, you've built your whole company now around feeding the glasshouse industry, and the glasshouse industry is growing quite rapidly now, feeding the grocery store chains for greenhouse grow and strawberries, and uh, uh, wanting to extend that season. So. Have you pretty much seen that, or that you're now going to be able to give them what they want when they want it in terms of quality, quantity, um, and time? Yeah, we are, and uh, we've come a long way from the first house to now going to here and beyond for what we need, what is the program to get it, and how much further can we push it in terms of, okay, the plant was great last year, what can we do better this year? and knowing that okay there are things that we can still manipulate and when you're in an environment like this you can control it right and how early can we push that to help our customers hit earlier and earlier markets uh, so that they're economically viable as well and uh, and you know we're seeing plants respond to the positive things that we're offering to the plant and our customers and the consumers are as well so what do, you, what do you think is the growth potential of the berry industry in, in Ontario over the next couple of years? Honestly, at this point, it seems relatively limitless as strawberries are not only going to glass houses, but they're also going out of the dirt into raised substrate. And that requires a plant that we can produce out of here that necessitates a greenhouse and necessitates a cravo structure that we can actually use into the fall time and into the spring time to also fuel season extension strawberries. So not only through the winter time, but starting earlier and, and picking later. And that plant is also being produced out of here. So, and realistically, we can do more berries with this as well. We're looking at other berries, which means more different shelf space for that. So you're really on the front end of the curve here of the berry industry? I believe so. I believe so. Very exciting. Well, it's uh, great to uh, see the journey that you're on, and uh, you guys are obviously doing things right. Your customers want more, and uh, appreciate you sharing your experiences so far. Thanks, no, Dusty. Absolutely, sir. Thank you. Okay, thanks so much. Thank you.